You're listening to the Sketchnote Army Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Rohde, the author of the Sketchnote Handbook and the Sketchnote Workbook. And this is the podcast where I chat with sketchnoters and visual thinkers and try to understand what makes them tick. Hey, are you looking for the ideal sketchbook for your sketchnoting practice? The Sketchnote Idea Book is the sketchbook designed for sketchnoters. Equipped with no bleed, no show through paper, you can take almost any marker or pen you can throw at it. Get 10% off with code ARMY at airship.store. Hey everyone, it's Mike and I'm here with my friend Pierpaolo Barassi. Pierpaolo, how are you doing today? It's so good to have you. Yeah, nice to meet you, all the people. Nice to meet you again, Mike. Uh, super nice sunny day in Bologna, so I smile more than a rainy day. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate to that. Living in Milwaukee, we're in the middle of a snowstorm now. Um, so hopefully I'll be happy after I'm done shoveling today. We'll see. Um, anyway, well, so Pierpaolo is uh, one of the principals, the creator of Yobi Scribes, and we've we've continually bumped into each other all over the internet and through friends like Mauro Toselli. And it just seemed like it was time to have Pierpaolo on the show and learn his story and hear what he does and all those things. So Pierpaolo, let's start with who you are and what you do. Yeah, I'm a South Italy guy. I started from the bottom, from the <laughs> very, very bottom of Italy. I'm, I'm a young boy now. I'm uh, more or less 40 years old. And I'm the creative director of Yobi Scribes. Yobi Scribes uh, is a creative crew of uh, artists, designers, scribers, sketchers, knowledge workers, a, a lot of uh, competence and people, and super nice people uh, um, is, is in Yobi. And uh, we are uh, in, in Italy active from uh, more or less 10 years. I started as a self-employed, just, just me. But mm -hmm. my idea from when I was a, a young boy is to create something bigger, is to share with mm -hmm. the others. Is uh, uh, If you ask me, which is your art? My art, uh, my talent is to connect people and to create mm -hmm. things together. So this is my, my, my short story. <laughs> Great. And so it sounds like you have quite a variety of skills that you offer to companies and individuals. One of which is scribing, right? Like graphic recording, graphic facilitation, sketch noting. But it sounds like even more than that. Um, tell me a little bit more about what Yobi Scribes does. And then also, where does this name Yobi come from? What does it mean? Yeah, there is an interest, inter interesting story uh, behind the name Yobi. Uh, as, as Yobi Scribes team, we do mainly scribes and graphic recording. It's okay. our core business. Uh, the, the machine is moved by the scribes. Okay. Uh, we, we also do uh, graphic, de graphic design illustration for uh, internal uh, um, companies. We work mm -hmm. mainly with uh, the, um, the internal part of the, of the companies. Uh, we also do videos. We do also some uh, facilitation and creative uh, skill boosters. We mm -hmm. love to call this uh, in this way. Um, we try to connect objective with creativity, reaching objective uh, mm, through creativity, through art, through games, uh, through having fun together. So uh, scribing is uh, the, the, the last part in some way because everything comes mm. and join into the scribes, but we mm. try to support and uh, help the company in, mm, in a bigger way. Mm. That's really cool. And then, uh, so the name Yobi, what does that, what's the significance of that name? Uh, Yobi comes from uh, uh, um, stupid research on uh, Google Maps. We are <laughs> looking for, uh, <laughs> we, we were looking for uh, a short name that was uh, memorable, that mm -hmm. was uh, connected with our background. Uh, we are um, two of the founders have a um, huge, uh, important uh, hip hop uh, and graffiti background. Mm -hmm. So we come from this kind of um, mood uh, and field. And Yobi is a uh, Yo is one of the, is like Ciao yeah, in Italian. Hey, yeah, yo. yo is uh, for the, 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 the black people and the, the, also the Italian people in, in the US uh, say Yo. 
Uh, and we, we find this uh, national park in Papua Nuova Guinea, uh, close to New Zealand, mm -hmm. just moving the mouse around Google Maps like that, <laughs> looking for a name. And when we see this name, we say, whoa, this is the name. And we found like this, that the next step is to uh, have a company journey all together in Yobby yeah. Park. It's not so close to Italy, but no. one day it's in our objective. <laughs> mm. Mm. So it is an actual place then in uh, Papua New Guinea, sounds like. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Interesting. It's, um, I think it's the worst, worst place. It's not the beautiful place over there. If you look on Google Maps, it is not the best place of the, the, the region of the nation. Sure. Uh, sometimes people tag Yobby on Instagram fro from the place and I we see. see the stories. Uh, uh, it's like um, the, the end of the of arrival, just not so beautiful. Mm. But for us, it's uh, wonderful. <laughs> interesting. Interesting. So I have a funny little story about Google Maps, if you'd like to hear it. Um, yes, uh, yeah, I, I so, want to hear. So my son now, he's 21. But when he was a little boy, when he was, I don't know, eight or nine years old, we had set up a computer for him to play games on, Thomas the Train games and such. And one of the games he wanted to always play was uh, Google Maps. At the time, they had an application that you could search around the world, and it started with a globe, and you would zoom in. And he sat behind me in my office at the time. I sat on the other side. So he was home from school one day, and I hear him going, woo, 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 woo. And I'm like, what are you doing, Nathan? And I turned around, and he said, I'm playing Google Maps. And you just see this globe like like floating in space. Like he thought that was the funnest thing was to make this the earth like shake like you know like crazy. So that was pretty funny. We play we played the same game. Really? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's how you ended yeah. up with the name. <laughs> That's great. Um yes. So, so so the names comes from this creative research. Yeah, exactly. That's great. That's totally fits with your your whole way of being, right? So that makes total sense. So uh, with Yobi Scribes, tell me how you got to that place. So you're, now you're doing this thing. Um, how did you end up there? Where did you grow up? Did you grow up in Bologna? And then you, or did, have you traveled? Like, were there uh, things that happened that sort of directed you bit by bit toward the life that you have now? I would love to hear that story. Super. Uh, I I born as I told you in the south Italy in a, a small town close to the sea, in front of the sea. Uh, I I study at Classicum Lyceum for my high school. Then I moved to Naples. It's a longer travel story. Then mm. I moved to Naples uh, to study uh, study law, and mm. I studied two years of law. Then I uh, recognized that not mine. And I change and move from Naples to Bologna. Okay. In, in Bologna, I start to study anthropology. Hmm. And after my degree in anthropology, I um, was a little bit, uh, oh, what I have to do now? I, I want to do graphics. I want to do something with my hands. I want to create hmm. and all, using my, my mind and my hands together. Not only my mind or, or not only my hands. And I uh, decided to start a career as a graphic designer, starting uh, also in this case from the bottom, making flyers for, for my friends. My friends was a musician, was an artist. I'm not able to play nothing. So I start to make graphics for them using my uh, background as a graffiti writer, as a... Mm. Mm, draw, drawer, not an illustrator. I don't want to say illustrator. Um, after that, I study in this school, and from this school, I win a master degree in a uh, in a school in Milan, design school in Milan, mm -hmm. and I move from Bologna to Milan. In Milan, in this master, a person that mm, already knows uh, uh, graphic facilitation, scribes, uh, my mentor. Uh, comes to run a workshop, and uh, I immediately fall in love with him and with the methodology. Also mm. because the only uh, things that helped me in my studies uh, and in my career as a student was to sketching things. Mm. Yeah. I already studied working and thinking with uh, uh, sketching. My graffiti background also helps me 
to understand immediately the power of uh, graphic recording and graphic facilitation because when you make graffiti, mostly and especially illegally, you have the same splitting of your brain mm. like when you do scribing. With a, the with a left part, you draw and see the space and the flow. With the right part, you pay attention. In one case, mm. don't be catched. In the other case, yeah. listen to the other. But it's the same splitting. Wow. Well, it sounds like you almost gathered all these parts, right? You said, you, and also interesting that you went all the way from the toe of Italy, all the way up to the very top of the boot, right? So from the bottom yes. to the top, in a sense. And then, you know, uh, learning about law for two years and all these other experiences, anthropology, which it's interesting there's some uh, ties between anthropology and user experience design as well, because you're, you know, observing people and how they act in a natural environment to learn how to improve, you know, the design of yeah. the thing that they're going to use, right? So. So I would imagine all these things maybe are helpful for you in the work that you do. Would that be true? Absolutely, yes. When I was in my career as a student, I can recognize this can help me. Or I was young to recognize. Yeah. But now I, I really uh, use and um, I'm great to myself uh, to make anthropology, but also law, also classical lyceum are things that have opened my mind and... Uh, especially in the relation with the clients, especially in the understanding the clients is, is super important for, uh, for our career, for, for my career now and for mm. our career. I, I talk as Yobby as a group, so I will Got it. speak, I and, uh, and us together sometimes. Uh, just to finish the, the story of my, yeah, um, how, how, I, how I jump into this uh, field, uh, the person that comes in uh, in the workshop uh, asked for a, a guy to make an internship with him. So I moved back in less than one year from Milan again to Bologna. Mm -hmm. And I stay one year and a half in the studio and uh, looking, listening as a sponge. I try to catch more things and more information for myself. And after this period, I start my um, self um, career by um, owned by only by me, uh, with a partita IVA, we call in Italian, is like a fiscal number, a personal mm -hmm. fiscal number, and I, I made uh, eight years uh, alone, and uh, after eight years, uh, the first that joined uh, your big was Monica, and now we are uh, four people in the studio. Wow, wow. So you sort of, you know, live the life for eight years doing it yourself. And probably saw all the places like, man, I wish I had someone else who could do, who thought like this or who could spread the load a little bit. Uh, probably all those things, right? Um, I'm really I'm really curious, uh, what role do you play now? Obviously, you do scribing still because there's only four of you. You probably have to. But who does like the, the company management and those things? Is it spread across the four of you? Does that... Is that something that you focus on or are there a few people that do sort of the, you know, you have to get the customers and you have to book them and the invoicing and the paperwork and taxes and all that stuff, which unfortunately comes with the whole story of being a business who sort of manages all those things. Me. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, just, uh, I'm just joking, but yes, uh, the thing is uh, um, in this period, in the last two years, my life is changed. My professional life is changed from a creative life to a manager life. Mm. But uh, it's a process of uh, killing the ego first, because if you want mm. to grow up, you have to kill your ego and you have to um, trust the people that can speak for you, mm -hmm. work for you, and make uh, uh, things how you image. Uh, my idea is to don't create a copy of me but to have people that can add value and to pass the logistic way uh, of, of my idea to my team. But uh, uh, in this moment, I'm looking uh, to a lot of things. Uh, there is Monica that uh, is uh, helping and looking for me in, into the art direction part, into the mm -hmm. creative part. She's more... Um, focused on it and also she's focused on the video uh, editing and mm. video scribing part 
-hmm. but the um, administration is uh, in charge of me for now. My idea is to delegate as more I can, a little to come back to be more creative and more practice because I, I want to, 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 to do scribes a lot and, and again and again. Uh, it's, it's really my passion. Uh, well, when I make scribe, I, it's like a happy crying. And I'm really, I feel I'm some light, it's me. And the, yeah. I feel scribing is my thing. Yeah. But my thing is also, as I told you, organize manage people and try to create new things together, not only with my uh, ends, but with my vision, yes. Yeah. Well, I could see some advantages in a company like that where if you have three other people who could do scribing and different skills, they each bring their own perspective. It makes you a stronger company, right? Because you now have three different ways, like, oh, uh, you like the way Monica does it, she could take that job or so-and-so could take this other job because their skills are really good at that thing, right? So it gives you, you diversify. I suppose then the next thing for you maybe is uh, now that you've internalized all the running of the company, you know what you need. Now you can hire an administrator, you know, to do certain things to free you up to do that creative stuff. So maybe the fifth person isn't a creative person, but maybe an administrator who does sort of the things that take you away yeah. from the creative work, right? Yeah, the, the next step is uh, to hire an, an, an administrator. Um, I, I think just um, to have a complete view of my idea is uh, when you want to grow up, the, the two processes are making people happy. So mm -hmm. uh, simply paying uh, the, the right uh, fee for them to uh, be uh, happy and also killing your ego. I killed my ego. So <laughs> now we are just growing. Uh, and uh, uh, we um, we have Monica as creative director and art director. We have a copywriter. We have a young illustrator uh, mm -hmm. that she's learning scribing and she's trying to uh, learn as much as possible visual mm -hmm. methodologies. The next step is to hire a, an administration and step so, by step. Yeah. Uh, we don't want to scale up too fast yeah. because we, we want to do the things uh, in the flow, in the natural flow. Yeah, I think that's the organic following an organic path makes sense, right? Um, yeah. In this case, and it's really interesting too because remember, in your uh, origin story, you said that you were just like this new person you hired, trying to absorb as much as possible and learn, right? So maybe that person in the future at some point, maybe they start their own Yobi scribes, right? Like you never know, right? But you're sort of following the cycle. The the cycle that you went through is now the cycle that your team is learning through as well, which is really cool. Yeah, and also I think uh, uh, we as scribers, as graphic facilitators, as graphic recorders are really lucky people. We have the possibility to learn a lot from big companies, from open-minded people. Mm -hmm. So one of my goal life, uh, like, um, like the first, is to share what I learn with the others, is to pass my competence to, to, to some other one, to create more and more and more visual communication for the world, for the people. I, I really believe and I really tru tr I truly believe in the methodology. So for me, yeah. it's super important to have a loop, in infinitive loop. Yeah, exactly. You become, to, grow, to grow all together. Yeah. And then you become uh, Obi-Wan Pierpaolo, right? So you become the, the old master teaching, teaching the Padawan, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not in my objective to be the only one. <laughs> That's funny. So um, we, we just want to we just want to make beautiful and useful thing for the others. That's good. That's good. So we've we sort of talked about who you are, what you do, your company, your pro how you got here. Can you talk about uh, a recent project that you're excited about that you can tell us about? And what that looked like, like what what did you do? Were there uh, videos or other components outside of the scribing that were part of it? And how does that look when you deliver it to the customer? Okay, uh, one of the um, uh, last project of um, the year uh, 2023 was uh, a video uh, we create for a small company that uh, uh, produce uh, sustain sustainable uh, energy. And they ask us to uh, 
create uh, some story that will be um, catchy for different uh, uh, target, for different uh, age of target. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we try to do um, old uh, 90s style cartoon. Mm -hmm. uh, we work uh, a lot on this and um, we, we are really happy of the results. The client was uh, really happy of the results. Um, now in the, the new year, in this year, we are starting to work uh, uh, a lot. to uh, keeping notes and keeping trace of their work with sketching and with pencil and not with the digital um, tools. Uh, and also we are working uh, with some several universities on this field. And this is another part of the hobby that uh, me and also our, our team, like, my, my team like a lot to uh, uh, help the young people to try to... Uh, make uh, in their mind uh, uh, there is a possibility there is another mm -hmm. possibility for me and could, this is cool this could be a new way for me we love to see the eyes shining in the young generation and yeah. that uh, uh, fills our heart and our mind mm, that's really cool as scribes we restarted uh, uh, normally also in digital but also in a uh, handmade uh, uh, version and we will go in Sofia uh, in February uh, to have um, to to see it to follow the TEDx uh, uh, Sofia event that will be about limitless. So we mm. move also in Europe in this year. We are trying to cover the Italy as much as possible. One of our objective is to be the the best, the, the number one company that do this in Italy, step by step. Uh, but also we are looking to, to Europe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's certainly opportunity for sure. Mm. This episode of the Sketchnote Army podcast is brought to you by Concepts, a perfect tool for sketchnoting, available on iOS, Windows, and Android. Concepts Infinite Canvas lets you sketchnote in a defined area while still enjoying infinite space around it. To write a quick note, scribble an idea, or keep pre-drawn visual elements handy for when you need them most. The Infinite Canvas lets you stretch out and work without worrying if you'll run out of space. And when combined with powerful vector drawing that offers high resolution output and complete brush and stroke control, you have a tool that's perfect for sketchnoting. Search Concepts in your favorite app store to give it a try. Well, that's really great. Um... So you've talked about a project. Now I would love to hear um, shifting. What kind of tools do you and your company like to use? I have my guesses, but it's always interesting to hear, especially if there's some unusual tools that you use. And let's start with analog first and then digital second, if indeed you still use analog tools as part of your process. Okay, uh, like the, the one, uh, the, the best tool we we use, uh, uh, I can say the, the product name. Yes, please, please. Uh, yes, okay, we use mainly Uniposcas and Grog tools. The mm -hmm. Grog are uh, graffiti writers uh, okay. uh, markers. Uh, the one that drips also uh, when, when you see in the city some drip text ah, yeah. is made with this kind of uh, marker. Uh, like a mop, um, and uh, these one are the, the the best one for us. They are acrylic colors. Uh, they fill on uh, a lot of surfaces. That's the reason we love this one because with these two kind of marker, we are sure uh, the, the surface could be covered with with the, the right color in the right way uh, almost uh, always. Um, but we uh, try a lot of uh, markers. We come from uh, um, a, a world, as I mentioned before, graffiti that uh, um, mix technology and techniques uh, uh, like spray, rolls, uh, um, uh, paints. We try to make different uh, uh, tools. We try to use different tools, but it depends by the project. Mm. Uh, for the digital, uh, um, obviously, it's no normal lens were Procreate uh, and iPad, 
but also we love to use uh, still illustrator <clears throat> like okay. all designers <clears throat> right yeah yeah so that would be on the computer and with uh do you have do you use something like a wacom tablet with a pen or just the mouse uh, uh yes we have two wacom tablets okay uh in the studio uh and several ipads for uh, the the live scribes or for some yeah. uh, small projects uh it, it depends when we have to print we normally use uh, uh, illustrator right. and wacom if we have to create and produce something for the web uh, we go directly on procreate also for the illustration uh, for the animation uh, the, the world is changing because uh, adobe is not the Yes, it's still the best, but uh, a lot of competitor of Adobe mm. is still trying to do something uh, uh, easier than use the software of Adobe. Uh, Procreate uh, is uh, growing yes. with the animation parts, uh, and we boot, use boot uh, Adobe and Procreate to create a short animation. Maybe we animate in Procreate and then... Uh, edit in premiere to have a more professional uh, editing yeah. uh, but it depends by project by project yeah it's good that you have it's always good to have more tools right because then you can choose the tool that's right for the job yes and, and, we you know, yeah no sorry yeah otherwise you know i mean sometimes you get interesting results by using the wrong tool for the job right i've i've seen that happen where because you use the wrong tool for the job because that's what i have it produces a really interesting output, which actually you might come to like, right? Like, I don't know, I can't think of an example, but I've, I know I've had that happen where I just grab the pen that's available to me and think, well, this is not the right pen, but like, that's a really interesting, that looks really interesting. And you kind of go with it, right? Yeah, and uh, you open uh, an open door with me uh, because I think there is no wrong way to create. The only way to create is experiment, is mixing mm -hmm. technology, techniques, uh, is to try to if you especially in this era if you want to create something new you have to mix you have to experiment you have to, to try to find something new it's not yeah. so easy to try find finding new but if you experiment you can try to um also to put yourself out in a different way if you use if we use the same brush all the scribes who use the same brush on procreate all the scribes will be more or less the same. Yeah. If you try to experiment and to put yourself experimenting, trying, having fun on what you do, the difference will come out. Yeah. It, this is an interesting, now that you talk about this, this brings up a thought that I've had, and I don't think I've talked much about it, is that the tool you use can change the output of the way you work, right? Um, so when I use a brush pen, the output that I, it changes the way I work. Like you wouldn't think so. You would think, I mean, still there's the Mike Rohde personality is coming out of it, but it gets, it gets expressed in a little bit different way when I'm using a brush than when I'm say using, you know, something like a big Neuland fat marker with a, you know, like the output, it, it changes the way I work. And it's interesting that we don't often think about that. We just think, well, tools are just interchangeable. But I think in a lot of ways, the kind of tool can sort of shape the output to some degree, maybe not completely, but have you found that as well? And I think that might be an opportunity while we're talking about tools is to maybe use intentionally, what if the experiment is to intentionally use the wrong tool and get frustrated, but then find the unique, like, wow, that's really like for 80% of what I wanted, it didn't work for that 20%. That's really cool. Maybe I can use that in a future project, right? That's, I usually do that, right? I'm fooling around and like I discover something and I try to remember to use that in some way or find a way I can use that kind of mistake as an intentional thing, right? So has, has that happened with with your team as well? Yes, and we, we think uh, nothing uh, go into the trash. When you mm, do something, you get some experience and maybe you will not use this uh, experience for years and years and years, but mm -hmm. when you need this, you already know. If you yeah. have uh, a lot of uh, space in your uh, head and you feel it, when you need something, you immediately remind what you need. Uh, we have also to play and to use our mind as a computer 
some information you have to delete, some information you have to keep. Mm -hmm. And this kind of inform information is what can help you to grow and to make new things, beautiful things, useful mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent. Well, that's good to hear. Sounds like we're on the same page. <laughs> um, let's shift now to tips. Um, I warned you a little bit ahead of time. Uh, so the way I frame this is I say, imagine someone's listening or watching us and they're a visual thinker of some kind, uh, but they feel maybe they're in a rut or they just need some inspiration or it's a gray day, right? And you just don't feel it. Like what would be something you would tell that person that would encourage them? And I, I frame it as three tips. They can uh, be practical or, or whatever you like. I, I think I will give uh, three mindset tricks. Okay. Uh, because for us, uh, it's more important uh, the mind than the end, uh, especially in our work. The first, the first, first of all, have fun. As you write in your book, if you don't have fun, you, you can do this, this kind of job, this kind of work is not your field. You have to think positive, positively every time and try to play with yourself, especially when you listen and you have to synthesize in real time. If you don't have fun, you can create nothing. The, the second thing is uh, do what you know. We are professionists. We, um, a lot of clients for, for our uh, point of view, but uh, in general for our experience, try to uh, guide you but it's not correct, is you have to guide the client mm -hmm. because you are a specialist. We are specialists in this field and uh, it's not to be uh, super egocentric, but it's, it's true. If you want to have the best result from us, you have to trust us. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, doing what you know is the only way to uh, make yourself sure and uh, be perceived as a sure person, as mm -hmm. a professional person. Uh, so the focus is I'm good on that and I do that uh, and try to uh, implement and grow up on what you, you love, what is the obsession of your life. And the third thing uh, uh, I can say as a trick is to give thanks. As I mentioned before, we are super, super lucky. I um, had the possibility to meet uh, uh, super HR manager, super people manager, uh, marketing manager of big brands. We have to steal from them and to report to, to our community. And doing this is giving thanks because we have this good possibility to have an impact. We have an impact uh, during our scribing session because the responsibility is huge we can um, evidence the difference or uh, uh, eliminate some difference uh, we have to be really uh, responsible when we do scribe but the same responsibility is to what we learn in the big companies is to pass to the community where we live mm -hmm. very cool thank well, you it's it's uh it's always good i love this part of it uh you may or may not know that at the end of the season we gather all the tips together and we um we make them into an episode at the end one of my favorite ones one of many people's favorite shows is the those tips all merged together because you get 60 minutes or something of inspiration from all the guests so it'll be exciting to include these in the session in this in that in that episode so Thank you for sharing those. Super, for us. super. Thank you for having me with you this afternoon. Yeah, in Italy. yeah, yeah, yeah. So the last thing that we can talk about is how do people find Yobi Scribes? Is there a website, social media? Like, what's the best way to see your work and then also to reach out to you? Which I may be the same thing. Okay, I think the best social media to see our work is LinkedIn. Really? Okay. Cool. Uh, yes. We use a lot LinkedIn also to uh, create a relationship with our clients, also to mm -hmm. find the new potential clients, but is the, um, the place where we publish uh, the more um, scribing, the more part of the job. Okay. If you want to see illustration and uh, other stuff, also like videos uh, and uh, um, 
promo of our uh, company, Instagram, and uh, it's at Yobi Scribes. Uh, but uh, if you want to see scribes and works, LinkedIn is the best pa page because mm -hmm. it's the one that we uh, use more with post and um, creating pools. So we, we use a lot of our LinkedIn okay. page also because the, 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 our buyers are on LinkedIn. Got it. So the, the, our target is over there. Yeah, it does make sense. It's interesting that you mentioned that, that I've noticed probably in the last, I guess maybe the pet, starting with the pandemic, that there's a lot more visual thinkers on LinkedIn. And I was, I kept ask, I was asking someone, a guest a few, ep a few seasons ago, who is a specialist in LinkedIn. Um, I said, so am I, is it a, like a trend or is it just me and the algorithm is showing me what I want to see? Right. And she said, no, it actually is a trend that there's visual thinkers that are going on LinkedIn and sharing their work because it's an, it's an interesting platform, lots of engagement, a really different type of, uh, you know, potential clients or people there. So that's really a fascinating shift. Of course, you know, Instagram is natural, right? It's designed around visuals, although Instagram's in a strange place where they don't know what they want to be, right? The, the, the static picture is sort of getting overshadowed by the reels and, you know, there's so much going on there. It's hard to know what the focus is, whereas LinkedIn is relatively stable and a lot of opportunity. So I think there's, you know, uh, visual yeah, if, if I can okay. give you a numeric date that data is um, from from Instagram we have the page from eight nine years we mm -hmm. catch and collect free clients from LinkedIn in less year five six years that we have the LinkedIn page company page the fifty percent of our clients comes wow. from LinkedIn Wow Wow. And I suppose word of mouth, which is probably the best type of new client the, acquisition, yeah, the fifty percent there, yeah. yeah. But that but probably supports it, right? Because someone says, "Oh, you need to work with Yobi Scribes. Go look at their LinkedIn page, right?" So now it becomes a reference, right? And then you yeah. can see like who else did Yobi Scribes work with, right? Then you have validation. And also, there is an empty space in Italy. There are several companies that. Mm. do scribes and this kind of thing we, we are thinking also to implement our youtube channel because mm. also over there uh, especially in italy there, there's not a voice there's not a, mm. um, a a company a person that is doing this uh, um, in a strong way yeah. uh, like in germany there is benjamin that he had that channel right. with tips and tricks in italy there's not uh, uh, social communication about mm -hmm. uh, scribes, about graphic facilitation, about sketch noting. So we are trying mm -hmm. to position positioning ourselves also in this social way. Mm -hmm. We love to work and to make job done and not to be uh, posting and social media manager. But yeah. uh, it's not possible to uh, live in this era without yeah. uh, posting on social media. Yeah, that's true. And it seems to me like you probably you started to identify that each social media sort of has its benefits. And also, it's often not the same audience. I've noticed that with the podcast. So the podcast has existed since 2016, the audio version. Uh, I think two years ago, I started experimenting with posting these recordings as videos on YouTube, and it's a completely different audience, right? So if you think of it that way, if you've got the capacity to do LinkedIn and Instagram and YouTube and whatever other platforms, you're actually diversifying in a lot of ways because the people that see you in one place don't necessarily see you in that other place. And so it's actually expansion in that sense. Yeah, so, and also um, you have to remain under an, an umbrella but the tone mm -hmm. uh, but the tone of voice is also different it's not only the target but how you have to mm -hmm. catch engage connect attract this target is three level of three different yeah. communication yeah yeah you have to so tailor we tailor hired that. a copyrighted we have hired a copyrighted <laughs> smart smart move, smart move. <laughs> yes <laughs> well well, Pierpaolo, this has been really excellent. I've learned a lot from you. And um, of course, we'll reach out and get his, uh, links for all the things, all the places we can send people to. We like to do show notes with details. Thank you so much for the work you're doing in Italy. Thank you for being such a great person and seeking to find people to work with you and to 
represent our community in such a positive way. I'm so encouraged. And I just wanted to let you know, I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. It was a super pleasure for me to be here with you. Well, and hope to meet you in person as well, soon as possible. Yeah, I think we need, I need to do an Italian trip. Uh, of course, my wife will kill me if I don't bring her along. So maybe we bring the whole family. That would be fun. So when that happens, we'll, of course, let you guys know. And you will be our guest in Bologna with Mauro. Oh, that would be great. You can come in our studio and we go to eat tortellini. Maybe I need, you know, we need a, uh, we need an Italian tour all the way from Milan down. So we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Up to be your Cicerone. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, for anyone Glad who's... You, Mike. Yeah, thank you. And for everybody who's watching or listening, it's another episode of the Sketchnote Army podcast. Until the next episode. Talk to you soon. Ciao. Ciao. The Sketchnote Army podcast was created by me, Mike Rohde, and brought to you by Rohde Design Studios. It's produced and edited by Alec Polianis of Amp Creative Studios. The theme music was created by John Schiedemeyer. To support the creation of this show, I invite you to buy one of my books, The Sketchnote Handbook or The Sketchnote Workbook. You can find the books on Amazon or... Go to peachpit.com and use the code RODI40 for 40% off. Please share this podcast with other visual thinking friends and be sure to leave a nice rating on iTunes or your favorite podcast listening app so others can find the show. 